Let's go. I don't know what you're going through, but we stop by to tell you that what's in front of you is bigger than what's behind you. Your destiny, your promise, your future. You might as well shout before you get it, because God sent me here to tell you that what he has for you is going to be big. That it's my season. That it's my season. You ought to declare that over your own life. Say, I believe. And I believe. That it's my time. That it's my time. It's my time. It's my time. And I can feel it. And I can feel it. <laughs> Say, breakthroughs in the room. Breakthroughs in the room. It's yours if you want it. Anticipating. Anticipating. God's getting ready to move. God's getting ready to move. Listen, you ought to declare this over your own life. Say it. God, he's working a miracle just for me. And it's going to be. Hey, listen, I don't know about you, but I'm excited about my future. Why? It's going to be big. Shouting into my promise. Why? God's gonna.
Welcome to Changing Lives Ministries. I am Sister Amanda, and I want to say welcome, welcome, welcome. It is my opportunity to be able to say thank you for coming to join us today. Come on in, set yourself up so that you can get the word that you need. I expect to hear about a blessing. Amen, amen. How many happy to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Amen. On this morning, this is going to be probably the last sermon. We've been dealing with finances and uh, God blessing you. This will be the last sermon probably in that series. Uh, but before we get into it, I'm going to take a detour and then I'm going to come back to it because I want to talk to you all about something. You know how you wake up sometimes and you kind of feel something? Y'all know what I mean? Okay, right, this is how it was for me this morning. So I want to put something to rest. Uh, before we go on, because sometimes the enemy, what he'll do is he'll take something and he'll divide people over something that you should never be divided over. You know, we never should have been divided over water baptism, you know, but he did it. Didn't he do it? Yeah. Oh, come on now. We never should have been divided over in Jesus' name, did, should That's we? Right. But but he divided us over. Didn't he do it? Yeah. Amen. So you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I'm going to read this, Sister Angie, and uh, because I want to get through it quickly so I can get okay. through my word. But I want you to go to Revelation 13. This is not really the sermon, even though we're doing it, so I don't know how media might want to do that, but uh, this is how kind of how we're going to flow, just opening up. Y'all with me? I mean, because we're going to go to Revelations 13. It was dealing with the beast, amen, that came out from the sea. And John said, that, he said, then I stood on the sand of the sea, and I saw a beast rising up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and on the horns ten crowns, and on his head a blasphemous Name. Now, the beast which I saw was like a leopard. His feet were like the feet of a bear and his mouth like the mouth of a lion. The dragon gave him his power. Now, who is the dragon? The devil. The devil. So, this, now what we're talking about is the Antichrist. Yeah. So, the Bible said the dragon gave him his power, his throne, and great authority. So, he almost abdicated so that the beast could operate as him. And I saw one of his heads as if it had been mortally wounded, and his deadly wound was healed. Now, you know, what enemy wants to do is always imitate Christ. Y'all walking with me? Yeah. Amen. So he, he, he suffers a mortal wound, but he's healed. And all the world marveled and followed who? After the beast. After the beast. So they worshiped the dragon who gave authority to the beast. And they worshiped the beast saying, who is like the beast? Who is able to make war with him? Now, what is happening is the, the stage is being set for the Antichrist to appear. And when the Antichrist appeared, you're going to know who he is because everybody's going to say there's nobody like him. Amen. So he has not made his appearance yet. Amen. Y'all with me? Okay, he hasn't shown himself yet. Y'all with me, church? Yeah. All right. So they're going to say who was able to make war with him because he's going to be a super, super genius. He's going to have all this charisma. He's going to have all this swag. He's going to have all this persona. You know, he's going to, you know, he, he, he's going to be somebody that's very persuasive and somebody that's very likable. Yes. Yes. Y'all with me? Yes. All right. And he was given a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies, and he was given authority to continue for 42 months. Then he opened his mouth and blasphemy against who? God. To blaspheme what? God. Watch well, it. And to blaspheme his, his name. What else? And his tabernacle. His church. Somebody say his church. His church. And those who what? Dwell in heaven. So nobody's off limits. Amen. The unseen and the seen, he's coming against. And it was granted to him to make war with who? The saints. And to what? Overcome them. And authority was given him over every what? All kindred uh -huh. and tongues and, and Nation. Read. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him. Now, this is, this is, I want you to listen to this because he's given power and authority to overtake everything. If he has that type of power, then it must be a one world government. Amen. Amen. Are y'all with me? Because yes. he wouldn't have that type of power unless he was running everything. You know, right now, the way we're divided, one right. man can't speak globally. That's right. Okay, the leader of Russia can speak over Russia. The leader of the United States speaks for the United yes. States. The leader of Europe speaks for Europe. Are you all with me? Yes. And I know I'm moving a little fast because I'm trying to get this information to you. Okay, so he, but, but this guy has the power to speak in every tribe, every tongue, every nation. That means he's, that this is a one world order. Yes. Y'all with me? 
United. Okay, watch Amen. this. Watch this. And whose name has not and wait, wait a minute. And all who dwell on the earth will do what? Shall worship him. Now this now this is very important because I want you to be able to differentiate between where you are now and where the where the earth will be then. Yes. This is important because if you can't differentiate, you'll be uh, you'll have an end time issue with a right now moment. Are y'all walking with me? Okay, so watch this. Whose name has not been written in the book of the life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Now, the Lamb that was slain by the foundation of the world is who? Jesus. Okay. Now, here's what it says. All who dwell on the earth would worship him whose names have not been written in the book of the life Amen. of the Lamb slain. So if your name is written in the book of the Lamb, you won't worship him. Amen. But if your That's name is right. not written in the, in the Lamb's book of life, then you will worship him. That's if right. anyone has an ear, let him hear. He who leads in captivity shall go into captivity. He who kills with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience of the faith of the saints. Now, watch this. Then the 11th verse said, that says what? And I beheld another beast. Now, another beast comes up. Y'all see coming this? Coming out of the but earth. Now, wait a minute. We had the dragon. We got the first beast. And now we got what? Another Somebody said another beast. beast. I saw another beast coming up out of the what? Earth. And he had what? Two horns like a lamb. And? And he spake as a dragon. So you can see that this, 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 is, a, this, is, a, this is a trinity. You got the dragon, you got beast one, and you have beast two. Now beast two is the false prophet. Amen. Y'all with me? Okay, so I see another beast, he come up, and he exercises what? All the power of the first uh -huh. before him and, and causeth the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose, whose deadly wound was healed. Now, I know I've taught you this before, but I just, I just got to teach it again because I want you to be clear. So the false prophet, watch this, he's really good in religious circles. Y'all hear me? The Antichrist is politically savvy. Yes. The yes. false prophet, is, he comes in to bring the spiritual aspects That's to it. That's right. And he causes all of those who might have had second thoughts, he's cleaning up the remnant. Uh -huh. And he's pointing to the Antichrist. Amen. Are y'all walking with me? Yes. Because he said, watch this, and he wants, he exercised all the thought of the first beast in the present and causes the earth and those who dwell in it to worship who? The first beast. Who's what? Whose deadly wound was healed. He performs what? Read. And 13. he doeth great wonder. Uh huh. So that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. And? And deceiveth them that dwell on the earth uh -huh. by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast. Now watch this. I want you to listen to what he's getting ready to say. Telling those what? Saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image uh -huh. which had the wound by a sword and did live. So he said, that the, so the false prophet is saying the Antichrist who was wounded, everybody needs to worship him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he uses his power to seduce what's left to get them to worship him. Now this is a clear statement that he's saying everybody worship the Antichrist. Yes. Y'all with me? Yeah. That hasn't happened today. I'm going somewhere. All right? Watch this read. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast. Uh-huh. That the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. Now, this is very important because here's where it delineates itself. When you are in the end time moment, you're going to have to make a choice to serve the beast or take the mark. Y'all with me? Let's read it. Come on, read. And he calls it all, both small and great, uh -huh. rich and poor, mm -hmm. free and bond. To what? To receive a mark in their right hand uh -huh. or in their forehead. Now, the Bible knows what it's talking about. Amen. It's not a shot. It's a mark. That's, that's place where? 
in their right hand and, or in their forehead. And that what? And that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. 18. Here is wisdom. Uh huh. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred three score and six. So that number is what? Six six six. Six six six. six. Why am I talking to you about it? Because you have to be careful in nowadays. Because some people are taking the vaccination, and some people are acting like they're taking the mark of the beast. And the vaccination is not the mark of the beast. I got to talk to you about it. Are y'all walking with me? Yes. Okay. Okay. So if you don't know that, you 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 start pushing doctrine that's not accurate, and then you start condemning people that you shouldn't be condemning. Because people are taking a stand. You know, to me, your stance to take the vaccine or not is just your personal choice based on what you believe and if you trust the government. I don't trust them. But that's a whole other story that ain't part of this sermon. Oh, you all understand what I'm saying? Yeah. But if you don't understand that, sometimes you'll see people, you know, I, I ran into, I talked to a pastor, and I went to his home, and we we're talking, and so when I got to his home, I had my mask on. I said, how you, I don't know how you rolling. You know, you, 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 you want me to keep my mask on? You want me to take it off? Said, oh, no, we good. We had all our shots. I said, cool. Now, the, 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 the level of, watch this, faith he had, and as happy as he was, I was happy for him. <laughs> <laughs> are, are, are you all getting what I'm saying? Yeah. Because that's where he operates, and that's okay. And so what I'm saying to you is, you know, just be careful not to demonize. If you hear somebody take the shot, you, you, your nose go up. You know, you, you, you kind of lean back. Are you all understanding what I'm saying? Yeah. It's, it's, it's just everybody's choice. When you get to the mark of the beast, they're going to tell you, they're going to tell you, you're going to have to worship him. It's going to be clear. Yeah. And you're going to you're gonna have to worship him and take the mark, or you won't be able to buy and sell. Right. Did y'all read this in the scripture? Right. Amen. Do you see why I'm discussing it? Yes. Do you see why I'm discussing it? Because churches are splitting over it. Really? Y'all with me? I don't want my church split over Nothing. You know, you weren't baptized in Jesus' name. He was baptized in Jesus' name. And now the whole church talking about, hmm, hmm, if it ain't about Jesus, it's all about Jesus. Amen. Amen. Are y'all with me? Yeah. Okay, do you understand my relevance to why I need this, I want to say this this morning? Yes. Y'all with me? Okay, so if your mindset is, hey, if they after the vaccine, I'm going to take it, you know, that's your mindset, that's your mindset. I am just want you to be clear that it's not the mark. Don't anybody tell you it's the mark of the beast. Amen. Now, what I do is I give you information to let you know what they're giving you, and then you decide if you're okay with that. Y'all with me? Yeah. Look how you're looking at me. I done flipped the whole spirit of the church, didn't it? I should have just went on taught on money, and then I probably got a big offering. I done flipped it, Sister Georgia. <laughs> now they're out of the spirit of giving. <laughs> Y'all get what I'm saying? Because I care. And, and, and it's interesting, when you care about people, you have to help them see. Amen. You have to help them see. So, so this, 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 this kind of bothered me because I'm hearing a whole lot of things going on. Okay? And I don't want my church to be confused. Confused. Okay, Amen. as to what's going on. And I don't want my church having infighting over people's decision in the church. Amen. 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 Old folks say, my mama used to say this all the time, every tub got to stand on his own bottom. Y'all with me? Yes, sir. Amen. So respect the autonomy of people. That's true. That's true. Amen. 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 And, right. not, and don't get into these pers trying to persuade people what you think. My job is to expose, Fold. not impose. impose. Now, I'm going to tell you what I think. If you ask me, I'm going to tell you. Right? Because you, yeah, you asked me. Nobody asked me this morning. I just gave the word. <laughs> Y'all get with me? 
Okay, if you ask me, I'll tell you. Not now. But I'm giving the word. Because I want you clear. Yeah. Amen? That's right. Amen. So don't, don't, don't fall out and faint and all that. You know, you, no, 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 no. We're not doing that. Amen? So, so somebody say, money. Money, money, money. Okay, all right, I'm playing. No. I'm playing. Here's what the Lord told me something. Can we switch, can we switch lanes now? Yes. Y'all all right with it? Yes, sir. Okay, now I'm going to move kind of fast because I took time helping you. <laughs> Sister Nancy's just looking at me. <laughs> I heard your thoughts too, Sister Georgia. I heard them all the way up here. Just want you to know. Here's what the, here's the Lord telling me. I'm, I'm, I'm switching lanes back to where we're going today. The Lord told me, he said, it's interesting how we come here, and when we come here, we're in the most vulnerable state we'll ever be in. You come here naked, and you come here naked and not ashamed. Amen. Don't you? Amen. You come here with nothing on. Watch this. You can't help yourself. Am I right about it? That's right. And you know, what's, you know how you got here? Watch this. It was the goodness of God. That at your most vulnerable point, he, he put somebody in place to help you get to this point. Because had someone not helped you, you'd have died. Yes. Now, whatever you think about what helped you, that's a whole other story. But it's obvious that God used it enough to keep you from dying. Are you with me? Now, when you get here, you don't have any sense of lack. You neck it yeah. and it don't matter. And, watch this, and you're taken care of without thought. Oh, I'm going to take my time this morning. You're taken care of what? Without, without thought. thought. So, watch this. So, when I really understand that, I'm at my most vulnerable state. I got to understand that when God sent me here, he sent me here and he made sure that I was taken care of yeah. because he had a plan for my life. Yeah. And even if I had evil parents... They couldn't overthrow his plan. Amen. Because what God has said, he has said. You walking with me? Now, we're not going to scripture, but you got Joseph. Anybody, everybody know the story of Joseph? Amen. Joseph, 17-year-old boy, he has a dream. And he has this dream, and in this dream, he, uh, he sees the sun and the moon and the stars bowing down to him. Yes. Didn't he see it? Yes. Okay. He had another dream that the sheaves were bowing down to him. Didn't he see it? Okay, and so when he has this dream, here's what the Lord told me. I, I, I was looking at it, and he goes through his life, and all of these things are happening. He gets thrown in the pit. Yeah. After he gets thrown in the pit, he gets traded as a slave. Anybody yeah. know the story? Amen. After he's traded as a slave to the Midianites, they, they sell him to Egypt as a slave to Potiphar. Yes. Y'all with me? Okay, after going to Potiphar, he gets accused of trying to do rape. Yeah. Am I right about it? So then he goes from Potiphar, he gets thrown in jail. And then he rises as an ex-con because when he's in jail, he interprets dreams. He, gets, he, he rises, the, the king calls because the king has a dream that disturbs him, and he called Joseph, and Joseph interprets the king's dream. Yeah. Are y'all walking with me so yeah. far? When he interprets the king's dream, because of the interpretation, watch this, the king understood that he needed Joseph to run the kingdom. Because no one knew, like Joseph, how to do it. He had to, watch this, he had an anointing for administration. He had a management anointing on him. When he was working in Potiphar's house, before Potiphar's wife accused him, watch this, the Bible said that Potiphar's house was blessed, and Potiphar didn't even know what he had. Amen. Because he trusted this anointing that was on this Israelite. Yeah. Isn't it interesting that all of those things happened to Joseph? And the Lord said to me, he said, all of those things happened to Joseph, and when he started going through stuff, I never gave him another dream. I gave him one dream. And that one dream was all he had. Because what God has said, he has said. And he gave Joseph this one dream, and no matter what he went through, he had to go back to the one dream. The one dream is I saw people bowing down to me. 
And no matter how hard the tests were, watch this, he didn't turn and say, you know what, I, this, this circumstance is a little bit different. Let me give you something else to go off of. Mm -hmm. Nope, the dream I gave you is the dream that's going to have to get you through. Bless the Lord. Now, this is really interesting because the dream is all he had, right? Yes. God never gave him another dream, did he? Mm -hmm. And he told him that you're going to have to ride this vision because this vision, watch this, is the answer to your economy. No matter what it looks like outside, I gave you the answer in the beginning. I don't have to give you another plan because I already know everything that's coming. Amen. So I am able because I'm omniscient, omniscience. Yeah. I'm all science. We make them all spiritual, but watch this. These laws run by science. He said, I'm omniscient, and because I've given you this one dream, it is the solution, watch this, to everything you're going to run into if you don't turn on it. If you ride the dream, it's going to get you to the position. But if you let events make you think the dream is lying, you're going to miss where I'm taking you. Yeah. Are y'all with me this morning? Yeah. And sometimes we, we miss God because we think the situation made God a liar. And the situation didn't change what God said to you. What God has said, he has said. This dream is the vehicle to get you everywhere you got to go. And you got to understand that this vision, watch this, it's stormproof. Paul was in the storm, wasn't he? Yeah. But watch this, but he had vision on him. Yeah. And when you got vision on them, even when the watch this, when the storm and the winds and the waves, even when it wrecks the ship, you're going to still get to the shore, even if it's on broken pieces. That's right. Oh, y'all not hearing me. Broken pieces. Because what he oh. gave you is enough to get you through it, yeah. even if you got to hold on to a board to get to where you got to go. That's right. That's right. So the dream tells you, neighbor, it's stormproof. And in spite of the economy, Joseph, it will get you to where you got to go. It just sometimes takes you through a strange route. Yeah. A strange path. They had a song that, that they used to sing. This is such a strange way to save the world. You would think if God was coming down to, to put himself in human form, he'd have been born in a palace. You'd think that everybody from everywhere would come and worship because he is, after all, the creator of all things. And worthy. But he's born in a manger. Yeah. Oh, y'all ain't hearing me. Yeah. In swaddling clothes. When he gets there, they don't even have room for him. How do you not have room for what made everything? And the song says, this is such a strange way to save the world. And, 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 and when you really begin to understand this, he said, Joseph, you're going to go through some different things, but the dream I gave you is going to get you to where I promised you. Now, I want you to go to Job 36 and 11 uh, because we started with this, but this is your insurance policy. Every once in a while, you got to go back and look at your policy. Yes, Am I right about it? Yes, and I got to move a little faster. You got to go back and look at it. Somebody say, look at your policy. Look at your policy. Read your policy. Because sometimes you don't read your policy, you find out you miss benefits you had. Uh -oh. yes, sir. And they won't tell you sometimes. <laughs> Hello, somebody. Because watch this, you're going to have to read it. Amen? Watch this. Job 36 and 11, what does it say? If they obey and serve him. Now, who is him? The Lord. God. If they obey and serve him, they shall what? Spend their days in prosperity. Uh-huh. And their years in pleasure. Now, I need you all to really get this because you've heard me preach this probably about 10 times at least now. But it, it sticks with me because he said, if you obey and serve me, you shall spend your days in prosperity and your years in pleasure, and you're going to have to settle that God is not a liar. Amen. Because what we go through makes us doubt him. Yeah. Oh, you can look at me all like you want to. But I know I'm telling the truth. And what God said is, if you obey and serve me, you shall spend your days in prosperity and your years in pleasure. But if you do not obey me, what happens? They shall perish by the sword. And? And they shall die without knowledge. He said, if you don't obey me, what's happening out there is going to happen to you. And I won't give you revelation in conflicting times. Are you with me? 
So if they obey and serve, let me put it another way. He said, if you can love me, I'll protect you. And you know what that really means? Watch this. You're going to have to trust how I feel about you. This is what God is saying to us. You're going to have to trust how I feel about you. There are, there are some things sometimes, you know, you know, my mom is sitting over there, and, and, and I don't have to ask my mom for anything. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. I don't have to ask her, not because sometimes I wouldn't like to have more. Yeah, I missed that. I don't have to ask her because she left me a field to work. Now, now I need you to walk with me. If I work the field right, what I need, I'll get. Because everything is in the field. Oh, it's quiet in here. And I honor what they left me by doing it right. If I do it right, watch this. If I meditate on the word day and night and observe to do, I shall have what? See, most times we want success to come from above when he's giving you a dream that has success in it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. we, we, we have to be spiritual because we're not doing what he told us. Does this make sense? Yeah. When I'm in disobedience, I need to say, he's going to give it to me. God got me. Yeah, 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 God got you when you got you. Yeah. If you be willing and obedience. if you love me right, how does God still love? Obedience. O-B-E-Y. Obey. That's how God spells love. Obey. If you obey me, you shall live the life I promised you. Yes, Lord. And we are not obeying, but we're acting like he's lying about the promise. Are you with me? If I trust how he feels about me, it'll paralyze the enemy against me. Because love is the answer to everything. Yes. When I move in love, the enemy is paralyzed because it's the one force he can't come against. Y'all with me? Yeah. And so my destiny is based, somebody say, on my love. On and my love is about doing what is right because it's right. That's right. God did not tell you how to live. He didn't take anything from you, everything he told you so that you can live abundantly. But when you don't want to do it his way because you're looking at something, you begin to doubt what he told you because you want it your way. And we have done a lot of things getting it our way, trying to sign his name. Is it true? So if the issue is love, when we talk about love, that means I'm going to have to be accountable for my behavior. I can't say I love you and treat you any kind of way. Amen. Amen. Some people, the reason, I want y'all to hear me well. I don't know how far I'm going to get. God be with me. Some people, the reason they don't understand love is because it's based on feeling, not behavior. We can feel any way we want to. But does your actions line up with what you say? Jesus said, if you love me, why did not you feel it? Because a lot of y'all feeling it. But there's no work. If you love me, you will what? Keep my commandments. Because love makes you act right toward things. Yeah. It makes you act right toward people. You can't tell me you love me and treat me any kind of way. Love restricts you. Love constrains you. If you love your children, you will take care of them. If you, I don't care how you say you feel. If you don't take care of them, something's wrong with the quality of your love. So love captures your emotions, and it pulls them back. Love held Joseph steady. Joseph wanted to, wanted to do some things. He, Satan talked to him, but because he understood the dream 
And because he understood his relationship with God, I love God so much that I'm not going to let you get me in offense. Ooh-wee. Because had I let you get me in offense, I'd lose my prosperity. Because most times you don't know your money is connected to your emotion. And how you feel about people, watch this, determines how you rise and fall. And what Joseph understood is if I get mad at you and blow it all, I'll never get to the palace. So I'm going to forgive because that's the course of the vision. Are you all understanding what I'm saying? And sometimes you wonder, what's going on with my finances? You are upset and offense blocks you from seeing destiny. When I am offended with you, I can't see where God is telling me to go. Because my eyes are on what you did, not what God promised. Y'all with me? So Joel was confident through the love of God, wasn't he? The love of God, watch this, he was confident in the love of God, and it was all about what God had said to him. And here's what Job said, and this is what I wrote down. Job said, my life cannot be a testimony for the devil. Job said, God has to deliver me. Even if I accuse him falsely, if my motive is right, if my motive is right, he still got to come get me. Because sometimes... We, we don't say it, but we kind of hold God responsible. Y'all with me? I don't want to take the long route, but I got to. I was, I was, I, I, I was, I was, I, this week I had a, I had one of the sweetest mothers call me that I know. You know, she, she, she goes to, uh, to another church and she called me. There was some, some conflict and she called me and she was, you know, saying, you know, I want, I need to talk to you. We having a conversation talking to her, you know, and after I, after I talked to her, Mother Bennett called me, and I'm talking to Mother Bennett about something with her, and, 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 and then I get off the phone, and the two women had one thing in common. Both had lost their only. Y'all with me? Can I take my time? <laughs> and, as, when I, and, I, and as I'm laying in the bed, and, I, and I'm, 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 I'm talking to the Lord, I'm like, wow, you know, my mind even went to, went to my mom's. I said, you know, dad's been gone, gone on 19 years. I said, mama's still here. And, 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 and I'm, I'm, I'm looking at mother lost her only biological son. You understand what I'm saying? This lady lost her only child. And I'm like, God, man, like, you know, couldn't you kind of like did something? Oh y'all, see y'all, y'all, see how y'all looking at me? <laughs> I know I'm, I, I know where I'm walking. I understand the water getting deep, but it's okay. I'm like, this was, this was all they had, and you know, mom been here going on 19 years. You know, no remarriage. You know, what's up? What's up? And I'm saying, okay, you can't accuse God. You know, and even if I look out in this audience, I see people who've had loss. I'm like, you can't accuse God. And, 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 and I know enough to know that, and I know this is going to be hard for people to eat, but most times our exit comes through how we lived. You know, the Bible said the curse causeless shall not come. I really do believe that most times, we don't want to say it like this, but most times when we expire, there's something in your life that caused that day to come. It's a whole nother, I know, I know. Just walk. Okay, am I all right? And, I, and I'm talking to the Lord. I'm like, I'm really feeling like you could have did something else. You could have did something else. And, 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 and I was looking at it, I had to say to myself, do I trust him that when I don't like what happens, I can trust that he's still working it for my good? And that, watch this, and, 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 and in, when I'm watching people that I know are hurting, can I trust that even though I don't get it and it seems, you know, unthinkable, that he's still working it for their good? 
Are y'all with me? And, 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 and I don't want to put myself in a position where I'm like, God, you know, because what I realized was subconsciously sometimes we are blaming him. Okay, y'all. Uh, I, I, ooh, I'm on another course. I remember when dad left, and I'm sitting here going, why you have to leave? This, this was the question that kept coming when I'm not thinking. Do you understand what I'm saying? Why you have to leave? Why you have to leave? Now, I'm going to show you something in this. this, this somebody say, hot off the press. Hot off. It's all I hot off the press. I'm looking at brother, oh, he's shaking his head. You know, I'm, I'm thinking, why you have to leave? And here's what I begin to understand. Y'all want my business? When you ask that question, you're feeling abandonment. I don't know, Lynn, that I'm thinking he left me. And I'm, 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 I'm trying to, and I know the situation. Be clear about it. But I'm thinking, you know, you still left me. You, you had a choice. Now, here's the thing about grieving, and everybody in here who's hurt over something, you're going to have to listen to this because you're going to need this. Grief is the only emotion that is designed to move you forward. If you grieve, you will heal. But if you slip in the morning, you might not ever come out of it. I need you to walk with me. Are y'all walking with me? You can get stuck in anger. You can get stuck in, stuck in unforgiveness. All of these are emotions that you can get stuck in. But if you grieve, God designed grieving that if you are hit with a situation and you grieve it, you will pass it. Don't mean you'll forget it, but you'll pass it. When you get stuck in these emotions, listen to me, church, listen to me. When you get stuck in these emotions, they begin to materialize in other areas of your life. So when you start fearing abandonment and you start feeling like you were abandoned, if you don't grieve that right, you'll start being afraid of other people leaving you. Is this making sense? You'll start feeling like, you know, if he left me, who else going to leave me? If she left me, who else is going to leave me? And the next thing you know, watch this, you become relationally unhealthy because you do relationships now out of fear. And my definition of fear is non-relational activity. That whenever I'm afraid, I'm going to do something to hurt this relationship. Are y'all with me today? All of these emotions, and I know I took a whole different turn, but all of these emotions, when we begin to understand, God said, you know, you shall eat the good of the land if you trust me. We're going to have to come to a place that maybe I'm not living my best life because I got some emotions bottled up in me that I haven't really released, that's sabotaging my behavior, that's causing me not to walk into the goodness that was promised me. Because I've become traumatized by an event that has capsized my vision. Are y'all with me today? So I'm going to have to trust how God feels about me. Tell your neighbor he loves you. So you repeat me. Tell him, tell him, tell him, tell him for real. He loves you. He loves you. And you don't have the power to stop him from loving you. You don't have the power to stop God from loving you. He loved you before you got here. He knew you before your parents met each other. Is that what he told Jeremiah? Before you were in the womb, I knew you. Is that what he said? I had a relationship with you before you got here. Your job when you get here is to reconnect to me. Reconnect, which means you were connected. So I got to settle that. Tell your neighbor, settle it. Settle it. Tell your neighbor, he loves you. Love Give me Hebrews 10, 35. You know it, but get it for me. Are y'all all right? I know I took a long, 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 long turn. 
But Hebrews 10, 35, when you get it, say amen. Amen. Read. Cast not away, therefore, uh -huh. your confidence. Say, Neb, you need your confidence. Because, see, confidence is the ingredients for faith. When you lose your confidence, your faith gets weak. Peter lost confidence on the water. Yes. Once he lost confidence, faith left. So he said, don't cast away your confidence. Why? Which has great recompense of reward. Now, he said, because your confidence, don't throw away your confidence because it will be richly rewarded. What do you mean, don't throw away your confidence? Don't be double-minded. Yes. When you're casting off confidence, you're double-minded. He said, don't cast it off because it will, it will be rewarded. Now, I got to trust how God feels about me. I got to trust that love that he has, don't I? If I can trust his love, then I'll have faith. Did you hear me? I wrote something down. I, got, I wrote it down. I said, love is like the curtain rod that, that, that hangs over the window. And faith is the hook that's on the curtain rod. And then everything else, the drapes, everything else hangs off the hooks. <laughs> Does that make sense? So when I love God, my faith is hanging on him. And everything else is hanging from my faith. Are you all with me? And so he said, don't cast away your confidence because it will be richly rewarded. Read. For ye have need of patience. You need to persevere, so. That after ye have done the will of God. After you've done what? The will of God. Somebody say, not before. You will what? Ye might receive the promise. Now, this just came to me as I'm reading this. And I'm going to tell you how it just came to me. You need to persevere so that when you have done the will of God, you need to be patient. Oh, you need to have patience so that after you've done the will of God, you will receive what? The promise. What he has promised. And hear what the Lord just said to me. Because when we read that, we do it in time. I just saw this. We do it after you have done the will of God. That's after you've completed the task. That's in time. But you know what I just saw? You can do it immediately in your spirit. When Jesus was in the garden, he died then. The will of God wasn't done when he hung on the cross. Right. It was done in the garden. That's that was just execution. Yeah. The will of God was done in the garden. Yeah. This is so important because if I can do the will of God in my volition, if I can make up my mind in the moment that I'm going through that this is what God wants me to do, I'm sold out to it, watch this, then I got to be rewarded now, right now. Yeah, yeah. I just eliminated time because I died already in my spirit. And the reason we can't get what we want because we're not dying in the now. We're waiting to die. That's why he can't bring it to you because you're waiting to die. Y'all with me? For in just a very little while, he was coming, will come, and will not delay. Read 38. Now the just. The just shall what? Shall live by faith. Somebody say by faith. And what? But if any man draw back. Uh-huh. My soul shall have no pleasure in him. God said, if you draw back, I won't be pleased with you. God said, you're supposed to be aggressive. Kingdom is Aggressive. Kingdom is bold. You can't be timid in the kingdom. If God is on your side, why are you walking to the battle? Did David run? David ran. When David told Goliath, he said, this day. Yeah. Watch this. I'm not yeah. waiting to see you fall. I already saw it. Now there's going to be execution of what has already happened in my spirit. This day shall I offer you up. And the Bible said, when, they, when war came in, the Bible said he grabbed his rod, and the Bible said he ran yes, he toward Goliath. Yes, he We're running away from him. He ran toward him. Didn't he do it? Yes, he did. Swinging what he knew. That's all you got to do, run swinging what you know. That's all God's asking you to do. Just run swinging what you know. You ain't got to have all the answers. I'm just swinging what I know. So he said, don't shrink back. 
But we are not of those who shrink back, of those who are destroyed, but we are those who believe and are saved. What are you saved from? Whatever's trying to overtake you. That's what you're saved from. Is this making any sense? Yes. Satan does not have the power to take you out. Amen. Amen. I need you all to hear this. And, 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 and sometimes you get in the climate and, and everything starts seeming conflicting and, 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 and you start getting confused and, you know, you, know, you, you don't really know all these conundrums. And the reality of it is once I trust God, all of that is settled. So when God says tithes and offerings, why did he ask for? Because that's his way of blessing me. That's his way of getting what he wants to me. Oh, you all walking with me. And when I trust him and I obey and serve him, I live my days in prosperity. And I live my years in plenty. And that's not economically based. Because seed never con considers the environment. Wow. Hallelujah. Y'all with me? The Bible said, now faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. That's faith. Can I give you one my one last scripture? So you know, I, you know I, I'm not going to be able to finish it. Give me Romans 5 and 1. We got to move, Sister Angie. You really hold me up. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right, Pastor. <laughs> I forgive you. Don't do it no more. <laughs> amen, amen. You got to be careful who you play with in the church. I was playing with somebody the other day. They asked, you offended? I thought you was mature. I won't play with you no more. <laughs> I'm playing. Y'all know I'm playing, right? Romans 5 and 1, what does it say? Therefore, uh -huh. be just. Justified by what? Faith. Faith. We have what? We have peace with God. Wait a minute. We got peace. Somebody say, I got peace with God. We have peace with someone. There's no strife. Amen. Amen. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through who? Our Lord Jesus Christ. Read. By whom also we have access. Now, we have access to Christ by what? By faith to what? To his God. Grace. So faith gave us access to the grace that was given to us by God. Wherein we stand. Uh-huh. And rejoice in hope. Uh-huh. Of the glory of God. Read. And not only so. Rest. But we glory in tribulation. When was the also. last time you did that? <laughs> Amen. See, when you trust how he feels about you, you'll glory in it. In if you're second-guessing his love, you're second-guessing its motive. But we glory in tribulation, knowing what? Knowing that tribulation worketh patience. And? And patience experience. Watch it. Now, that experience, another word for it, is character. God's trying to work some things in you, make you better. And character what? And experience hope. Re verse 5, watch this, read. And hope maketh not a shame. God is not in the business of embarrassing you. Amen. The Bible says, hope making not a shame. It doesn't disappoint because what? Because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts. Uh-huh. By the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. Now, um, this, is my, this is the last place we're going. But I want you to really get this. That the love of God, hope doesn't make us ashamed because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. For when what? For when we were yet without strength. Now, watch it. When you were weak. In what? In due time. Read. Christ died for the ungodly. Watch this. When you had no relationship with him. Yes, yes. When you didn't even know, when you wouldn't show him any respect or honor. The Bible said that in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. For what? For scarcely for a righteous man will one die. Now, he said, the Bible said people won't die for a righteous man, Harley. Read. Yet peradventure for a good man, uh -huh. some would even dare to die. And for a good man, somebody's really good, they might dare to die, but God was. But God commended this love toward us. Read. In that while we were yet Watch this. He didn't even pick if you were good or qualified. That's he didn't right. even pick who, it didn't matter to him.
him that no matter who you were while you were yet sinners, the Bible said what happened? Christ died for us. Watch it. There was no qualification. Hallelujah. There was nothing you needed to do. There was no test you needed to pass. You didn't need to come from a certain family. The Bible said no matter who you were, a good man might die for somebody, maybe. But Christ died for everybody. When you weren't thinking about it, the Bible says he died for you. Watch this read. Much more than uh -huh. being now justified by his blood. Now that God, Christ has put us in right standing through his blood, we shall what? We shall be saved from wrath uh -huh. through him. Now this is very important. And I want you to get what he's saying. That when I accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, everything that's trying to kill me, I've been saved from it. That's really important to understand because that means the only torment I can experience is where I don't give it over to him. If I give it over to him, everything that comes after me, he has to destroy it. Yeah. I said yeah. it like this, your trouble is in trouble. When you really begin to understand that that trouble can't trouble you, that trouble is in trouble, God has already delivered you from the snares of the fowler. Hey, thank you guys so much for joining our live feed and broadcast. We do appreciate your time, but we are eager and excited that you're joining our community, our faithful community of followers and believers, people who are life changers, who are world changers. And so what we're going to ask you to do is if you have a desire to give because this message is feeding you and providing everything that you need to help you get to that next level, to present your best self, then what we're going to ask you to do is partner with us. No gift is too big or too small in the kingdom of God that is going to be utilized to reach the untaught, the unchurched, and the uncommitted. So we thank you so much for what you're doing, what you've done, and what you will continue to do as a life changer. Thank you so much. Remember, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord show you his favor and give you his peace. God bless you.